right, good morning, everybody. How we doing? All right, before we get started, everyone should see like one of these things around you. This is our connection pad. This is how we stay connected to you beyond Sunday. Make sure that you have filled this out because we don't want to miss anybody from being a part of what we got going on here. All right, so we're at, Happy New Year, by the way. All right, well, Happy New Year. All right, okay. So, hey, guess what? We are in the middle of a fun new series uh, called Family Membership, and uh, we wanted to kind of take you through orientation, if you will. Remember college days, you had your orientation where they told you about all about the stuff to expect, and you got your syllabus and all that. Uh, that's kind of what this is. And so last week, we talked about the flock. This week, we're talking, and the body of Christ, or the, the family of Christ, uh, the church, as being a flock of God. And this week we're talking about uh, being a body. Next week we're going to be talking about us being an embassy. And then finally we're going to be talking about uh, us being a family. And we started off last week uh, with us being a flock of sheep. And we started with verse uh, Psalm 100, verse 3. Know that the Lord, He is God. It is He who made us. Meaning He's our designer. And we are His. We are His people, the sheep of His pasture. And we talked about how Jesus uh, is our shepherd and that He saved us and that he loves us, and that he unites us. And kind of we're going off that theme of us being united in him, and this week we're talking about how we're united in him and being one in his body. And these are all metaphors uh, that God's word uses. So, we're, you know, God's word uses that we're a sheep, or we're a flock of sheep. God's word uses that we're a body of Christ, and that the metaphor that we are an embassy, and that we're all ambassadors, and the metaphor of we're a family, and we're all family members. And so this week specifically, we're talking about the body. Now, it is the new year, and it's a new you. How many of you are going to drop 10 pounds this year? Come on. All right. And we go to the gym, right? We go to the gym, and if you go to the gym now, there's going to be a line at, like, every machine. Like, you want to get on bench? Forget it. Like, you better go, like, at, like, 3 in the morning. Then you got, like, some room because the entire free world, up until February, has this, like, Great idea that they're going to get in shape and work out, and then everyone quits in February. So the best time to join your gym is in February. Uh, and that's kind of an exciting thing. There have been some times, remember, back before I gained 10 pounds and ate donuts, um, <laughs> I, I was in peak physical condition. I was uh, in the Army. I was an Army Ranger. I did a lot of uh, things, and I was in peak physical con condition. In fact, I just uh, graduated from... Um, uh, special Forces selects, Selection, and I had just done 50 miles with 100 pounds on my back. I was feeling like, Ugh! And uh, so I got down to the next, like, uh, school that I was going through. It was at Fort Benning, Georgia, and it was like a classroom instruction. But in the afternoons, all the guys would go and play ultimate football. It was like ultimate Frisbee, but since nobody could throw a Frisbee, we, we played it with football, all right? And so, um, you know, I was dominating. I was like, these fools don't even know what they're messing with. And, like, I would get frustrated with all these other, you know, people who couldn't play, and I would just get out there on the, on the field and dominate. And then on one particular day, I was, old, I was got something juiced my competitive juices, and I started playing like exceptionally hard, and I was going to run over people. And, um, <laughs> and so I, I get the ball, or the ball's thrown to me, and I go, and I'm leaping up way up, head and shoulders above everybody. And then I grab the ball, and I come down ready to make a cut. I mean, like, I'm like doing, and and I hear my knee make this weird noise. And I'm like, Aah! And like in a minute, I'm like from like athletic specimen to like little girl crying on the floor, or on the field. And so like a bunch of guys come over like, dude, are you okay? I'm, I don't know. And like, get me to the hospital. So they, you know, a bunch of guys, you know, they cart me off. And turns out like I can turn a, a big weenie really quick uh, and so then uh, I, I get to the hospital and I, I meet the doctor and, and, and like man somehow they got me in front of a surgeon like in, within seconds so like hmm definitely needs to be surgery you haven't even looked at my knee yet anyway that's just army reality okay and so um, it turned out I had a, a partial tear of my MCL uh, which I didn't even know what an MCL was it's a medial collateral ligament anybody else have an MCL tear at any point all right, awesome, good time. Oh, yeah, man, we're all like rejoicing. And so uh, I, this one little piece of ligament shut me down because it, was, it like, had a partial tear in it. Isn't that crazy? I mean, but, but we all know what it's like to be healthy, right? We all know what it's like to have a healthy body that's 
not injured. Like when you're playing sports, when you're at like maybe your high school best and you were, you were playing, or maybe you just play Madden, all right, and you could like, you could throw that ball so well online with all your friends because your hand-eye coordination. Anybody else get ten- Nintendo-itis back in the old days? Anybody else? All right, so like your, your thumb stopped working back in the old days. That, that was like back in the beginning of video games. Uh, and so there, there's come the thing that your body is made to operate at its ultimate best. And that's why when it, your, the blood flows, the muscles flow, the, the, they're working out, and it's just an awesome experience. But when you get injured, you feel it. It's painful. And, and this is kind of what I want to go with, and I'm, I'm stealing the metaphor from the Bible, is that the body of Christ is like an actual body. And when we're healthy, oh man, it is awesome. There is no greater joy, there's no greater experience than being a part of a healthy body of Christ. Uh, but there's a tendency in us to kind of disconnect. There's a tendency in us to be like, I don't really know if I need that. I don't really need to be connected because of whatever reasons we, we sort of disconnect from the body of Christ. And so this morning, I want to inspire you. I want to inspire you that the being a part of the body of Christ, being a member of this local body of Christ, this local expression of Jesus, right here in Wells Branch is the most awesome thing that you can experience. That's my hope and my heart today that you'd be like, you know what, he's right. I always thought church membership was for the birds, but now I'm in. All right, so that's kind of my, I'm going to try and convince you of that, that you are going to be like sold out in, and that's kind of where we're going this morning. So to do that, I'm going to use God's word, and we're going to be in um, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and that's on page 959. If you don't have a Bible, uh, we're going to be passing out some Bibles. Just raise your hand in the air, wave them like you do care. A Bible will come to you, and uh, you'll get one of these sweet hardback ones. If you don't have a Bible, all this is our gift to you. If you, if, like, you forgot yours today, please use ours, and then just leave it in the chair, and somebody will eventually pick it up. Um, yeah, that's where we're going to be on page 959. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And we're going to be starting verse 12, but let me explain what's going on in this particular piece of Scripture. In this particular piece of Scripture, we have... Um, Paul, the writer, is writing to a church, and so anytime you see the word you, that should be y'all, okay? It's, it's second person plural. And so this y'all that he's writing to is this entire church, and he's, this local expression of Christ in, the, in Corinth was just kind of a mess. It was people fighting, they had like debates over who was better than one another, it was like your Instagram, Facebook posts, only like in person, okay? Like there's, there's people like saying, no, no, I'm awesome, no, no, I'm awesome. And that's kind of how it would go. It was like a back and forth of I'm awesomer than you. And then people started feeling like they weren't that great because all the rich people had a lot of stuff going on. And, and so there's just this, this, this huge disconnect between people and the way that the privileged felt and the way the unprivileged felt. And it was just kind of horrible. And it was always this huge debate about gifting. Like people saying, well, my gift's pretty awesome. Your gift's not that great. And boy, it was a, an absolute disaster. And that's where we're going to pick up the story where, where Paul is going to try and help these Corinthians be united in their understanding of God's Holy Spirit being poured out on the church. Okay, that's where we're going. That's where we're starting. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. You guys ready? Verse 12. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body. And let me pause right there because you're just like, what? I'm <laughs> baptized into one. All right, here's what he's saying here. There's a point at which these people were not Christians. And then they became Christians. And how does that happen? A person that is not a Christian somehow sees the magnificence of God's glory and their just wretchedness as a sinner. And they understand that Jesus came from heaven to earth, died on the cross for our sins. And then he rose from the dead. And when you come to believe that, there's a baptism of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit goes, pours on you. Maybe one day you're just kind of like, you're just bawling your eyes out. Or there's something clicks for you intellectually. You're like, oh my gosh, that's me. I'm a sinner and Jesus died for me and he rose from the dead. Boom. And like your, your, your eyes open. You get a, a brand new life. It's this excitement. It's like, for me, it was like life went from black and white to color. It's like, oh my gosh, why didn't anybody tell me it was this awesome? Okay, so that's the experience of becoming a Christian. And all, like, so Jews are Greek, so doesn't matter what race you are, this is a cross-cultural experience. Slaves are free, doesn't matter where you stand in the economic ladder, 
this is available to you, all were made to drink of one spirit. Many Christians make up the one body of Christ. So here's, here's the way I kind of see it. So you have this experience of understanding that Jesus died on the cross for you and your wretched sin, and that he rose the dead, and you, when you believe in that, not only are you saved from separation eternally from God, but you, are, you have a relationship with God. And it's like you wake up a part of the body. And you didn't even know there was a body, but you wake up a part of the body. It's, remember Neo, Matrix, he like wakes up, and he's like, oh, I'm attached to this thing. And uh, that's, that's what it's like. You wake up, and all of a sudden you're in the body. It's like, wow, I'm a part of this body. And now you have new life. Now, here's, what, here's what's true about when you become a Christian and this understanding that you wake up and you're in the body and you might be an arm, uh, you could be, okay, you could be a mouth, you could be an MCL, or you could be a, a mammary gland. All right, there's my alliteration of M's. Uh, you could be any one of those, okay? And it, it, all of those sort of have a, an equal value, but a, a different use, okay? Equal value, different use. And so that's kind of what you sort of wake up and you're like, hey, I'm an MCL. How to become this MCL? I don't know, but I'm an MCL. And what you do in the next moment is, are you going to be a part of the circulation of the bloodstream of Christ? Because all, all parts of the body, they work off blood, which has you know, oxygen and water, and the bloodstream sort of feeds the entire body, no matter if you're the mouth or the MCL. It all feeds on that one spirit. Here's what happens. When you become a part of, when you become a Christian and you are a part of that local body of believers, you get, a, the, the experience is awesome. You get support. You get healing. I mean, this is how the body works. The body heals itself. You guys know that. Like your immune system, T cells, you know, they, they kind of come over and they, if there's disease, they, they fight against the disease. And just by you being a part of the body, you fight off the darkness just by you being a part of this. And it's incredible. And you get support, protection. When things are bad, it, there's this kind of natural healing process that happens within the body. But sometimes, uh, we, we've, we've experienced this. You've heard some people say this, and of course not you, but other people. I don't have to be a member of a church to be a Christian. Like, you've heard that, right? Uh, how many times have you heard that one? That's a good one. Uh, and the reality is that, that that's sort of true, but you miss out on the support, the protection, the healing, and the power that being part of a vibrant body of Christ provides you. You guys know this. Uh, okay, and it, and it looks like this. Um, let me try to explain this. It's like when you're missing out on the circulation of the body, then you're kind of missing out on the health of the body. All right, um... Okay, so how many of you guys play high school sports? Where are my high school sports heroes? All right, I played varsity basketball, all right? Now, I'm 5'10 on my driver's license, 5'9 in real life. And, um, <laughs> and so uh, the reality is, okay, let's just be real. I, didn't, I rode the pine, okay? Can we just tell me? I sat the bench, and I didn't play. And there'd be, there'd be times, though, when Coach Hatch would look down the line and be like, plick, plick. And I'd be like, you know, like startled that someone's calling my name. And I, at, the, at that point, I'd be like, you know, we're up by like 40, and um, it's awesome, right? And, and so he'll call my name, and then I would like get up, and I'm actually literally cold. Like everybody else is sweating, and like, you know, and my warm-up sweat, that wore off like, you know, about three minutes into the first quarter. And so here we are with five minutes left in the fourth quarter, and plick! You know, he calls my name, I go over the bench, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm stiff. And I, I kind of like, you know, I'm like ready to go into the game, and then like, you know, the, I'm just hoping that the ref calls a whistle, foul something so I can get in there. And I get in, and I'm like, I'm not as fast. I, I'm, I'm, I'm throwing up bricks, but I don't care. I'm shooting the ball because I'm going to score. I'm going to get my name in that paper, dang it. Um, But because I wasn't involved in the circulation and the flow of the game, I, my muscles were all tight. My muscles weren't ready to go. And I think sometimes, isn't it true, isn't it true, that life gets busy. And we get out of the regular routine of serving, and then so to get in hurts. <laughs> to get back in the game is sort of painful. And so what we do, we take a break, a long break, a, a really, really long break. And so then we're, we're just not involved anymore. And that's sort of painful. To kind of get back in, it's hard. And so my heart is, is that you would see that this, this Corinthian church is like, guys were just kind of checking out, all right, oh, you don't like my gifts? I'm, I'm going to take my ball and I'm going to go home. I'm not playing anymore. And the hard part about this is we're going to see is that every 
body part is important, and every body part has a use. Watch this, watch this. See, this is, this is, just keep going, look at this. Verse 14. For the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would may not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would be the sense of smell? But as it is, and I want you to highlight this verse. I want you to highlight this. God arranged the members in the body, each one of them, as he chose. I'm going to read that. God arranged the members in the body, each one of them, as he chose. Whether you are the mouth of the MCL. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, yet one body. I mean, when I, I know this is just me being bizarre because, well, I am me. I, I, when I thought of this, I was like, a bunch of organs sort of like hanging out on the ground. That's not a body. That's a crime scene. But that's sort of how sort of we feel. Like, they don't need me. I, listen. I don't need to participate. I don't need to, I don't need to, I mean, who's going to miss me? We miss you. You're a part of the body. Verse 21. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Just, you know, do your thing. Nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. Like the MCL, weak, but indispensable. Without it, you are crippled. And on those parts of the body that we think less honorable, we bestow the greater honor, like the lungs. Eh, you need those. Without lungs, you die. But they don't get, I mean, nobody ever goes, man, nice lungs. That's a nice set of lungs you got. Except for me when I'm singing really loud. <laughs> And our unpresentable parts are treated with greater modesty. For example, memory glands, which are more presentable parts do not require. All right, so here it is. The body disconnected from its parts is no body. That ain't a body. You can't disconnect the body from its parts. Okay, here, here's, here's an example of this. Um, all right, so when we go, look, we're at the gym, right? Gold's Gym, that's where I work out. Come on, work out with me. Um, I, like, there are dudes I sit there and I'm like, there's some Hulk of men. I'm like, how is that even possible? <laughs> and like, the, I mean, they're, I mean, these guys got some massive. Pe I'm just trying to get 225, man. I'm like, uh, come on. And these guys got some massive pecs. They got the, the traps, the delts, the buys, the tries, the abs, the quads, the calves. I mean, they got it all. But you know what? The one thing I'm not checking out. I don't think I've ever gone up to do that, bro. I mean, come on, tell me how you do it. That MCL is just sweet, man. <laughs> And that is one, I mean, like, what do you, and there, there are no blogs on how to, to expand the strength of your MCL. I haven't seen one yet. There, there aren't, like, five ways to sex your MCL. I haven't seen it. <laughs> but listen, without your MCL, you are what? Crippled. Because it has a place, and although everyone's not seeing it, and everyone's like, that's the MCL. I mean, you don't even think about the MCL until it's broken. But it's in dispensable. Um, I remember when I uh, first started to get involved in the church, um, I sang in the choir, okay? I was too flirty to be in the youth group to, be, to help serve in that, so they kind of kicked me out of there, and I went and served in the choir. Um, <laughs> that's a, another story, all right? I didn't really intend on sharing that, but there you go. <laughs> so, uh, so I get in, into the choir, and I start singing. Listen, I mean, you could have, I mean, if you know my voice, you, they were bearing with me. And I'm giving it all I got because like, this is my one place to serve. And I would show up to rehearsal, and I was singing tenor. And not 10 or 15 miles from here. I mean, I was singing with all I had. And I'll never forget this. I'm just giving it my gusto with, like, full on. I mean, there's, like, choir robes, the whole deal. And, you know, like, you haven't seen any choir here, and that's probably the reason for that. Anyway, so um, I'm giving everything I have. And after this service, I'll never forget this old man just sort of walks up to me and, like, he was like probably in his 70s, and there I am at 24, and he grabs my forehead. <laughs> and, and I, you know, he was a little, he was like 6'2", and again, I'm 5'9", 5'10", on my driver's license. 
And uh, he <laughs> grabs my forehead and gives me a kiss. And he goes, I just love to watch you sing. <laughs> I was like, thanks. <laughs> but there it was. Like, I, at that moment, I was just an MCL just singing my heart out. And all of a sudden, I realized I had encouraged that guy. And if I hadn't shown up that day... That guy probably been like, I don't know what he had going on in his life. I didn't ask. I was just too weird out at that point. But like, I, there was something that I was able to kind of provide for him in that moment that I just thought I was just showing up to sing. Do you see that? Do you see how like the MCL can get so much? Cra- oh, how about this? Uh, we have a, we're about to do a flag football tournament. You guys, flag football tournament on Super Bowl Saturday. So like the Saturday before Super Bowl Sunday. How, how many of you guys are playing in that? Like, oh my God, like three. All right, so guys, we need to sign up for this. All right. My man. All right, here we go. We need, all you got, girls are allowed to play too. Come on, Ashley. All right. And so here's the deal. We're going we're gonna to be playing, and um, there's a guy at our church who has a rifle for an arm. All right, his name's Preston Simon. And when that guy throws the ball, it hurts. It hurts to catch it. It hurts to be like in the, in the nearness of the velocity of that thing. It's like a missile coming at you. And you could, he, it's not like just in those short little darts. It's like when he throws a bomb. It like... 50 yards down, you're like, oh, my hands, it hurts. And so you wear padded gloves when you play with him. But I don't walk up to Preston and go, hey, Arm, you're awesome. Just want to tell you you were playing a great game today. Just want to, like, that's weird to talk to somebody's arm. You don't do that. I, I mean, I go, hey, Preston, that's a sweet arm you got. And, like, his arm gets all the credit. But you know what the reality is? It takes a lot more than just an arm. Just try throwing a football. Just go, yeah. It won't go quite as far as like a proper drop step. Your, get your legs, your butt, your hips, your back, your shoulders. I mean, re- everything goes in to throw that ball. But for some reason, it's the arm that gets all the credit. But Preston is the body who, who when he throws it, it's just this incredible athletic feat of art. Not really sure if that goes, but mixing metaphors there might be a struggle hang with me i don't go you know i don't talk to his rotator cuff i talk to preston and and sometimes the parts that are indispensable they don't get all the credit but man they are valuable every part of the body has value when it is used so so let's just talk about this sunday morning so right now um i get to be like the talker guy and flap my gums do a little dance sometimes i do karate kicks like last week and uh that's the part that sometimes gets seen. But to make this happen, there is a lot that goes into this. All right, so last night, we had guys set up the sign out in the park, like the big like, sign that says, Wells Ranch Community Church, and all the flags. That got set up last night. Then the setup team, or wait, first of all, at 7 a.m., we have a prayer team that prays over me and for the service and prays for it. And then, like, the setup team comes, and they start setting up all the, I mean, this, I mean, this is like a basketball gym normally. I don't know if you guys know that. Like, none of the stuff is here. And this all stuff, this, everything appears in the morning to give me some stage to talk from. Somebody set this up. And that took about an hour and a half to set up. And then uh, there is a greeting team out there that kind of, hey, welcome, woohoo, glad you're here. And then there is um, ushers and greeters inside that like pass out Bibles, pass out bulletins. There's a hospitality team that set up all the coffee. Uh, there's everyone that set up all the signs. There's an AV team that's kind of like working. Where are your, you know, Zach text me, I need your PowerPoint. Oh yeah. And so that gets put up on the screen. So like he's, you know, orchestrating that. And then there's the band that had to rehearse on Thursday night. They rehearsed this morning. They're kind of making this whole thing happen. And then there's WB Kids. My son right now is in WB Kids. And I'm so grateful that there are people who are giving their life to teach my son about the glory of God so that when he is 18, he doesn't go like, I hate church. That place is so lame. My heart is that he doesn't hear the love of God just from his parents, but he hears it from those who have invested their life in, ra- in helping to help me, partnering with me to raise my sons and train them the way they should go so that later they won't depart from it. And they remember their church experience, even if it was importable, as being like, whoa, I love Brandy's class. That's awesome. He loves Brandy's class. 
And then after this, uh, today, we're going to tear it down and like, hey, if you could all take a, um, after this, like, take a curtain, fold it up, that'd be awesome. Like, it takes a whole operation to pull this thing off. Not to, that's just Sunday morning. Not to mention our community group shepherds who, like, will visit people in the hospital, help people out in their need. They're, they're going to be ministering, doing marriage counseling. Uh, our youth shepherds that are pouring into the lives of our youth kids. I mean, there is so much that goes on through a week. Not to mention our letter writers who will write you a letter, thank you for coming for the very first time. I mean, there is, like, this church doesn't just operate because I get to hear them flap my guns do a dance. It is a, it is a, a body of believers. And when somebody doesn't show or they're too busy or they think, ah, who's, who's going to miss me anyway? I don't really need to show up. No one's going to care. It affects everybody in the body. Even if you feel like you're just a three-inch MCL. And that's why when February comes around, it's sort of like, like the, you know, the 20% who do 80% of the work, it's like down to the 10% who do 90% of the work. And so my heart for you is that as you're looking at becoming a uh, member, as we're talking about this, you would understand that you can't just disconnect. You need to be a part of the, the vibrant life sh- bloodstream of our church for your own joy and for the health of our church. Okay, last couple of verses. Verse 24. But God has so composed the body, giving greater honor to the part that lacked it, that there may be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. Look at this thing of care. If one member suffers, I want you to hear this. If one member suffers, all suffer together. If one member is honored, all rejoice together. Okay. Pleasure and pain affects the whole body as well as a body part. You guys know, where are my runners at? Do I have any runners in here? Like people that like love to run. All right, you've experienced something called a what? Runner's high. And when you're running, it's like your lungs are like, there's there's a little bit of a burn there, but it's like a good burn. It's like a weird thing to explain. And your legs, there's a lactic acid buildup, but you're like, mmm, it just feels good. I'm pushing through and I can run for forever until you hit a wall, and that's another story. All right, but like for the most part, you're like, you're experiencing like this pleasure to the body because the the endorphins are released, and when you're healthy, it's just, mmm. Okay, and then on the flip side, there's pain. Uh, So this week, Grayson, uh, our worship leader guy, he was playing soccer, and um, okay, Grayson's just a little bit competitive. I don't know if you guys know Grayson at all, but like he plays to kill, or I'm sorry, he plays to win, and you might die. So uh, he was going to um, kick this ball, and um, he gets slide tackled from behind, which is totally not the right thing to do. And then Grayson kicks through his ankle. Through, I mean, if we had like the slow-mo cam, like, and like the guy's ankle gets pinned between his, his foot and the ball, and goes, snap, and like, you know, and like the whole ankle goes, and so, like, you know, if it was no big deal, he'd just be walking on, like, the stub of his shin. Hey, guys. <laughs> but this guy who's, like, 6'3 and big, uh, he starts, Aah! and he's like, no, and, you know, and then, like, this whole team, you know, they cart him off, hospital, and they, like, shove him in the back of somebody's car, and off they go, and Grayson's team wins. I mean, that's how it rolls. Forfeit is as good as a win any day. Listen, we, we played a win. All right, never mind. That's another story. Another sermon for another time. Okay. But isn't it true that his ankle, it, it didn't matter how bad he wanted to play, he couldn't play. The body is affected. And the whole body suffers when one part of the body is hurt. Okay, I'm going to go on a different tangent with this. Um, some of you have said to me, and not at our church, of course, because our church is the best ever, um, but I just can't connect with anybody. I just don't connect with, I just don't, I don't connect. And I'm, man, this is going to sound really harsh. Um, I'm going to try to be really sweet and gentle and kind. Um, the problem may be that you don't know how to socialize. <laughs> um, and that might be because you spend so much time online, you don't know how to be like non-virtual. Okay, just, I'm, I'm going to give you some coaching. Here we go. We're going to do some coaching. Okay. So let's say you want somebody to like you. You know how you do it? You celebrate their successes 
or you cry with them in their sorrow. Now, here's, we're great at like crying with people in their sorrow. At least that's what we're better at. In fact, we are negative connectors. Like if you just want to complain about somebody, you'll be like, yeah, me too. That person stinks. Like, like yeah, that, that's, you're, that's like how we do it culturally, all right? But you know what I want us to start doing? I want you to start celebrating people's successes. I want you to just go up to random people like, man, that was an awesome setup of the stage today. Way to go. Like, Shep playing bass, wow, that moved me. All right, I mean, there's, there's got, or how about this? When, when somebody has like a job promotion, don't you sort of get irritated with it? I want you to go, yeah, I'm celebrating you. And that's hard because sometimes you like lost your job and things aren't going so well and you're like, all right, what are they doing wrong? I can criticize. Like, let's go celebrate people. And I promise you, you know what? That's, our culture doesn't celebrate people very well. You know where they do celebrate people really well? Bars. Like when you get a promotion, I got a promotion, drinks on me, woo! And everybody's celebrating. All right, so what I want is us to be a church that just celebrates people and their successes, and we kind of look for ways to kind of encourage one another. And listen, on the flip side of that, we got to learn to suffer well with one another. I mean, listen, th this is the church, I mean, I love how authentic our church is. We're hurting sometimes. Um, I did, a, you guys remember when I did the marriage series like in August? I haven't had to do marriage counseling literally since then until this week. All right, so like it wore off or something, I don't know. And like I had like four people, four couples, it was great because um, I love doing it, by the way. Uh, but, but the reality is we need each other, right? We need each other to kind of go into the hurtful, hard times that have struggled. There's, there's real struggle. There's real pain. There's real heartache. And there's real woundedness. And guess what? When you're plugged into the body, when you're connected to the body, your body is designed to fight off disease, fight off sickness, fight off injury. But when you're not connected, where are you going to get the immune system? Where are the T cells going to start fighting? If you're disconnected, you're just an organ laying there on the ground. And so my heart is that we would be a people that, that were really, really authentic. In fact, I think the reason why people just roam from church to church to church as they feel like nobody really knows me. Like our, our, our spiritual nomads. If, you, if that's you, you've just never really connected. And you know what? Here's why this is hard. It requires you to be what? Vulnerable. And everybody, listen, this isn't just you. It's me. I don't want to be vulnerable with somebody I don't know that's going to judge me. I was too flirty in my 20s, sorry. We want people to love us. But here's what's weird. The more vulnerable you are, the more people can connect. And the more they can connect, the deeper your relationship with God. You guys know that. But it's hard, right? Because if, so, if I'm vulnerable, they're going to judge me. This is the place. This is a safe. We're in the family room, right? This is the place where your vulnerabilities are not only okay. It's the place where they're protected. It's the place where you're strengthened. It's the place where you find healing. It's the place where you find hope. That is the local body. And I, my heart is get in and don't get out, meaning don't, wait, make, don't get out of the circulation of the flow of the Holy Spirit coming through this place. Because this is awesome. I mean, and here's the, the way we celebrate people is we baptize them. The way we celebrate people is like, you're not going to believe what happened in this person's life. They're out of death. They're free from sin. The darkness no longer has power over them. Their marriage is saved, and we celebrate. But we also suffer when things don't go like the storybook says it should. And I know that relationships break down. I know kids do all sorts of crazy stuff. I know parents have hurt you. And I know relationships and at this place, we rejoice and we suffer because we're one body. We have one bloodstream, one spirit working through that Holy Spirit of God. Last verse, verse 27. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. Let me rephrase that. Now, y'all are the body of Christ and individually members members of it. So Paul's writing to this church. He's saying like, y'all are the body. You're the local expression of Jesus Christ to Corinth. 
You are the local expression of Jesus Christ to Wells Branch and the greater Austin area. That is the truth. And you're individually a member of it, unless you're not. So my question uh, this morning for you is this. Are you a member of the body? And here's, here's what I'm asking. I'm asking this sort of in two ways. Are you a member of the body in that you have come to believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sins and rose from the dead? That you are no longer on a projectile path towards eternal separation from God? That you are on a path towards holiness and a path towards deeper, deeper, deeper relationship with Jesus? And if that's true, that's an exciting thing. If it's not true, I beg of you, be reconciled to God. There's no better time than right now. In fact, January is a perfect time to start your relationship off with Jesus. This would be a great time for that. And then my second question is, are you a member of the body? And what I mean by that is, are you serving a function in this body? What purpose are you serving? If you're a part of the body, you serve. You're used. If you're a part of the body and you're not used, and this is sort of a weird analogy, but if you're a part of the body and you're not used and you're just sucking on resources and you're sucking in bloodstream, you're sucking in, in things, what are you? But you're not contributing. You know what we call those? Tumors. My heart is, is that you would be a person who has received from Christ that amazing gift of eternal life. You have the Holy Spirit rushing through your veins and you understand the love that he has for you and despite all the background you have of people hurting you and church everyone's got the, their story of church and how it screwed them everybody does but could you love people in spite of them because of how jesus has loved you he that knew no sin became sin on our behalf so that we might be the righteousness of God. That in spite of our brokenness, in spite of our, the way we treated people, the way that Jesus saved us, he saved me, and he saved you. And so my heart is that you will get beyond that place where you say with your preconditions and the, and the things that have hurt, and you say, I'm ready to jump in. I'm diving into this thing. Let's go. I want to be a part of this body. I want to serve in children's ministry set up and tear down in community groups in however God is calling. In fact, right now, if um, do you guys have your little bulletin thingy? Can you guys hold those up? You know what I'm talking about? The little bulletin thingy with the little tear-off deal? I want you to, like, on one side of that little tear-off thing, you can write your name on it. On the other side is, like, prayer requests. I want you to write on there one of two things. Uh, today I'm becoming a member of Jesus, like, the family of Jesus Christ. I'm believing that Jesus died on the cross for my sins today and rose from the dead. Write that on there. Or if you're already a Christian, I want to start serving even if it's as an MCL. I want to serve this body. And then there's a giving box in the back. Take all those little requests and, and put them in the giving box in the back as you leave. And we're going to do something this morning to kind of celebrate sort of like who we are as a body of believers. And we do this regularly. Every so often we get together and we take a chunk of bread and we break it. And this is what we say. This is Christ's body broken for you. That Jesus died on the cross for your sin. His body was broken. And then we take this cup, and this is wine, this is grape juice. And so if you're going to do the wine, you take a little chunk of the bread, you dip it into the wine, because this is God, this is a, represents Jesus' blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. He said, do this. Whenever you guys hang out together, do this in remembrance of me. And so this morning, we're going to take communion. And if you're not a Christian here today, and I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad you're here. Like, listen, if you're not a Christian, hallelujah, thank you. Please come back. Um, but this is what Christians do. Christians do communion. And if there's some sort of thing that's like, like you're like, ah, I don't, I just, I don't want to be engaged with the body. I've got some sin issues that I don't really want to work on. I don't care. Then don't take communion. But if at this moment God's saying, I want you to be part of my body. I want you to be infused in it. I want you to, to repent and you be ready to push that back. Then come take communion. This is an amazing experience that Christians do to kind of celebrate.
celebrate the fact that God loved them enough to send his son Jesus to die on that cross and be raised from the dead so that they could have eternal life and experience the nourishment of the body. And so that's what we're going to be doing this morning. Then we're going to be taking communion. In fact, here's the way we're going to do it. After I pray us out, we're all going to stand up and we're going to go to our left, come down the aisle. Would you do that thing?